I was just coming in here today to clean out and, and I already threw a lot of the stuff out. Like uh, art? You threw the art away? Well, some of it. <laughs> you know, we all save things and say, well, I'm going to get back on it when I do this or that. Then that time never happens. Yeah, a lot of stuff going through. There are so many rooms here. I'm going to let go as much as I can because I personally don't have the space to carry this round. Yeah, and those are all stacks of boxes. They're actually filled with artwork in it. Secondly, I love the idea that it's out there. It's being shared, you know. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Jackson, Michigan. I was creating design for advertising. Looks kind of 70s. Yeah. Wanted to make some money, you know. The reputation of being a fine artist, you can't make a living. So I said, well, to safeguard, I was going to design. I just fell into it. I just seemed to have a knack for it. The things I designed, like graduation uh, wrapping paper for paper company. This was just filled with the neckties and and of course that's what I'm known for to a lot of the public. I grew up with ties because, you know, I went to a Catholic school and we had a uniform. I create all the design, all the artwork, and uh, some are done on the computer, some are done on freehand, some are composition of both my paintings and graphics put together. This is called Art in Motion, AIM, and it's actually a three-dimensional, and we have sold literally millions of these. The whole life story says, hey, get ahead, get ahead, do things above and beyond. Is he an artist or is he an entrepreneur? And everybody likes that hard luck artist story. He's not a hard luck artist, he's an entrepreneur. And then when you hear his story, you know why. Yeah, this is actually the photograph of me in Korea uh, before coming to America. And that's my brother on the right and then my sister down. I'm in the middle. My father was an uh, American GI and, yeah. and uh, easy as put it is that he got lucky one night. And people would immediately turn and just call me names. My mother came to me and asked me, if, would you like to go to America? I said, yes. I was adopted. And literally, I was the only Asian in the Jackson County the entire time I grew up. I was wondering when I went to his, his studio about the number of pieces he had that were prints or whatever. But then I realized he had shops all over, everywhere. And that was his headquarters. He needed to have all that work to supply his outlets. These are children's books that I, I designed. Yeah, called Follow Me. And all these boxes has all these uh, uh, designer tote bags, and uh, so I just uh, donated uh, about 2,000 of these bags to uh, school. Every kid's gonna have a uh, books and stuff to be put into these things. Need help there? Nope, I got it figured out now. If he started out doing shows and his work was all over the place in the show then you'd have a better vision on his concept. But because you've got you know, the purses, you've got the tea kettles and that type of, all wonderful, all wonderful, but you don't, you separate it from the artist. This was a um, painting that evolved from a doodler. I mean, literally, I was just on a small sketch pad. I drew all these images and, and I liked it. And um, next thing I created into a painting. A lot of artists, they just repeat doing this same thing over and over and oh my God, that, I have no idea how I could survive a situation like that. That's like trying to be a writer and the teacher says to write the same sentence hundred times. Oh, look at that. That's a jewel piece. I'm a true multitask person. When I'm doing a painting, I could design a logo for a corporation that could be Fortune 100 company. A lot of it was sort of experiment stage, and you know I'm, I have to start looking at it closely and goes, "Whoa, how, how did I do that?" 
yeah. by time you know, I need to stop painting because I need to wait for it to dry or something. I could go on the computer and then I could create that logo and then go back to the painting. And, and I sometimes do 10 paintings all at the same time. Here's painting done on aluminum, you know. To me, everything's art. Whether you're creating a design, whether you're an engineer, whether you're an architect, we're all artists, okay? I also do some sculptures, and, and uh, so there's really no medium or nothing that I don't do. You know, I think I pasted a fabric over a board and then decided to paint on top of that. It's a different medium, it's a different thinking, but to classify that you had done something, work, for advertising or design industry, that you're a commercial artist, that you're not a fine artist. Uh, to me, there is no separation. Look at all this stuff. What's this here? The Detroit Auto Show. I was uh, probably the only artist ever did a consecutive three, four years in a row. Andy Warhol, okay? What was he? He was a graphic designer, just like me. But somebody took oh, his and labeled it as fine art. I wish that he weren't so far all over the place. And a lot of what I consider to be the more bougie collectors can't handle it. Oh, the man of the hour. <laughs> I know it's been a long, long yeah. time, but I yeah. wanted to make sure to come when we heard yeah. about it. Yeah. You make it look so nice. Yeah. Thank you. I really don't like to be labeled. I mean, I just, because to me, every day I think different, I eat different, and art is the same way. We got the uh, email that you were going to the Philippines, so. Well, that's what we're trying. The reason going to the Philippines is uh, my wife is from there, so we're going to the same town my wife comes from. So what happens when you get to Philippines? Are you going to just make more art there or what? I'm going to do a lot of new things. I, I look at this as the last opportunity to do something new and different. Yeah. yeah. Dominic, my yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First thing is I, I want to build a house. The way I'm thinking of doing is a prefabricated. I don't know. I might even create a business of it if, uh, if it goes successful. And when I joined the museum board, and learned that he was going to be relocating to the Philippines. I thought that an exhibit like this in his hometown before he left the United States would be perfect. This is a special painting. It was uh, literally done on the Memorial Day of the uh, two, year 2000. And uh, all I'm thinking is the, the poppies for the veterans. And so I wanted to do something really big and huge. And, and so what these are is these are four doors. These are regular house doors. And this one, of course, is a painting of my wife. We were in uh, Australia right before the COVID. Delia was sitting by herself in the back, so relaxed, and she rarely would ever pose for me. So a lot of times when I do a painting of her, she has no idea. And he goes, when did you do that? <laughs> the title people are giving me, he's an evolutionist. Every day, he thinks different, he creates different. If I'm to take a label, that's the evolution, you know, evolutionist. Um, I'm fine with that because that's exactly what I do. Watch One Detroit, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.